And Dan, what did you make of, of sort of his quickness to dismiss the reporter who was just trying to ask him if perhaps he should raise that number, raise that goal? Um, it's, I guess, somewhat maybe you could call it pushback against the president. I don't think so. I think it was a very fair question and uh, he didn't want to really answer it. Well, fairness seems to be in the in the eye of the beholder, doesn't it? So what we're seeing across the board is everyone being forced to pick a side, be on a team. And it couldn't be more wrong because the people who suffer the most are the American people because you have to sit back and wonder what is the truth. And, and the truth should be the truth, right? John Adams said facts are a stubborn thing. And it seems like there are no facts anymore. Everything is based upon opinion, which isn't necessarily wrong, but opinions are not facts. And I think that's where we're getting lost. And, and ultimately what we need is we need spirited debate on both sides. This, this whole experiment of democracy that we have in the United States, it's meant to be a big argument. And if you're going to have a big argument, both sides should have equal time and there should be fairness to express their views. Once the scale starts to tip in one direction or another, you lose the whole meaning of our democracy. Dan, what world are you living in? Because I want to come live there, <laughs> this fair, beautiful <laughs> utopia that you're describing. Uh, panel um, Dan, obviously, the president used social media to get his message out to his supporters directly, wouldn't have had to go through any news organization to do so. What do you think happens to Donald Trump, the American citizen and, and no longer president of the United States, access to social media? What's most troubling about everything that's happening uh, and what we see and what we're discussing, it's not just censorship. That, that's not a good thing. It's the selective censorship that we're seeing. So we're just looking at a certain group of people and say they're not allowed to speak because what they say incites violence. In the case related to Facebook having an independent oversight board looking at the situation with Donald Trump and whether he should be allowed back on their platform. Let's hope that this board is truly independent and is going to look at this in a way where it's not just about Donald Trump. Clearly, he's making the headlines, as he should, as the former president of the United States. But the bigger picture is, what about the little guy? What about anybody out there who has an opinion that wants to express it? Are they going to be censored? And, and their audience may not be as large as Donald Trump, but that's really not the point. This point is really about being able to express yourself. And as Tom said, this relates to the First Amendment. And there's a reason why free speech is the First Amendment. It's because it is incredibly important. And I want to make one more point. When we're talking about the control that big tech has over what we hear and what we see, keep in mind that Amazon controls a third of the, uh, of the cloud infrastructure. And if you add in Microsoft and Google, it's about 60%. So if that's not control over the population, I don't know what is. The government has to take a serious look at how the antitrust statute applies to big tech. Uh, Tom Borelli, Tom Borelli, Dan brings up an excellent